Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another two episodes or one, one, two questions and answers of PLA with myself, Nick and Bruno. Uh, we've got two questions today, both from agents, and we're going to just dive into the first one with yourself, Bruno. Uh, this a particular um, agent says their client just bought uh, uh, an investment property and discovered that the rental price of the current tenants, which is verbally agreed upon, differs from what is actually stated in the lease. She has just taken uh, occupancy uh, or, and transfer in mid-March, uh, and the lease extends until the end of the year, this year. Now, the question is, can she cancel the lease at this point and adjust the rental price, or is she actually obliged to continue with the lease until its termination date? Sure. So investment properties are quite a funny thing, and that's why I keep telling people that doing proper due diligence every time you buy an investment property is absolutely crucial because it's 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 tantamount to buying a business at the end of the day. And the same rules um, that apply to buying a business or getting involved in a business would apply to buying an investment property. So if you get into a business, what's the first thing that you need to uh, ensure is that there's going to be a certain income. Uh, you either project the income by testing the market or there's a fixed income existing contracts or whatever the case is uh, that uh, creates that level of certainty so you know you have a fixed income coming in. Um, so acquiring a copy of the lease agreement and even having conversations with the tenants is crucial. Um, the same way that if there's existing contracts in a business that you get involved in, you'd want to make sure that those clients or customers are going to stay with the business, that they tied in one way or another, and that you're going to continue to receive those orders. Same thing with property. Does the tenant, how long is the lease for? Uh, can, can the tenant cancel it on one month notice? Are you over-reliant on that amount that's coming in? And what is the amount coming in? And most importantly, what's the payment history? Uh, because it's great having a lease. It's great that the amount in the lease is, is, you know, awesome and creates great cash flow for you. But if the person's not paying, you need to check the bank statements to make sure that that income actually exists. So that's just uh, lesson number one when it comes to buying investment properties. It's never a question of not doing it because now you might have a bitter taste in your mouth. It's a question of just think when you do it and just ask the right questions. So that's, that's, that's the first thing, just putting that aside. Now, the question that's being asked, unfortunately, isn't the right question because the focus is being turned to the tenant. And now you need to remember, so under our law, we have a certain principle called Hirchat Furkwa, and that basically means that a lease will extend irrespective of whether, uh, you know, it's one owner or another, or there's a transfer of the asset from one person to the other. So the idea behind this is it secures the tenancy of an occupier that has a valid agreement. So it's almost like a, it, it's, it's a real right. It's, it's a, a right that the tenant has to the property that limits the rights of the owner. And when you transfer the property from one owner to the other, uh, that limitation continues to exist and the lease takes preference. So asking the question, can I cancel the lease is the wrong question because the tenant hasn't actually done anything wrong he's not oh well i mean it's assuming the tenants are in breach of the agreement provided that the tenant pays the rent uh, the tenant carries that right and will carry that right up until the end of the lease agreement you know, there are some um scenarios where landlord could potentially cancel but those are very unique uh so typically if the tenant wants to stay on the property he gets to stay on the property until the end of the lease agreement and no you can't cancel unless obviously there's there's some form of breach so the right question to ask is what is your recourse against the owner of the property because again you bought a business there was a representation that the business would fetch a certain amount of income uh, almost a guarantee, as it were, and the reality is it's not fetching that income. And that's that's maybe where your head should be at. So there's an argument, obviously, because I, I recall the question said that it was a verbal representation. Mm -hmm. but unfortunately, in our law, any contract that relates to the purchase of immovable property has to be in writing, uh, wet ink, in fact. Otherwise, it's completely void and unenforceable. So if 
Um, and now the question is, does this warranty or representation regarding the rental amount, uh, specifically, is it material to the purchase of the property? Should it have been in writing? Or is it a separate portion of the agreement that could potentially have been um, have been verbal? Now, interestingly enough, if you look at purchase agreements, many purchase agreements, where there's a tenancy component and a sale component to it, the courts have accepted that these are two different things. And the validity of an agreement based on sale has to be in writing and wet ink. Whereas if it has to be based on lease, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to, to, to abide by the same principles. So unfortunately, there's no straight answer to this. So does a warranty regarding the rental amount uh, should it have been in writing or should it have been verbal. I would argue that a verbal warranty to this extent could be permissible. You could argue that it's not material to the sale of the property, uh, but unfortunately, it's not a clear answer in my mind. But do, could you have recourse against the owner? Potentially. Uh, what would that recourse be? Maybe the difference in the rental amount. So whatever the owner told you versus whatever you're receiving, Bearing in mind, obviously, that it's a verbal agreement, so denying uh, what what was warranted is very, very easy. So the prospects of actually proving a case here are yeah, are dismal. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the the long and short of it. Right. Well, yeah, thank you very much, uh, there, Bruno. Once again, going to the due, due diligence uh, when obviously uh, buying investment property and. Uh, uh, for the our viewer to just to maybe look at the recourse against the owner, and uh, when it comes to these types of types of agreements, always reducing everything to writing.